My dear child, oh my child, I'm so sorry to be writing this letter to you, but the doctors have run their tests and it has been said that I shall die within the next hour or so. I know even the best vehicle on the planet could not return you to me at this time. I taught you that your education was important. It has always been your passion and though you were against going back to it because of my, well, my condition, I want you to know, my child, I want you to know that you should not blame yourself, that this is not your fault and that you should not cry too much for me. In your 16 wonderful years of living, I have taught you many lessons beyond that of your tutors, given you the knowledge that is needed for the future and ensured that you will have many good years of life ahead of you. In my life, the chaotic nature of the world has tempered and it has become far more peaceful. The destruction of unemployment and the abandonment of wars, the freedom of companies to do as they need to do, and so many other things too. You know your history well enough to know that where you stand now, the world in which you live is a joyous and amazing place. It is a world full of opportunity for you to take and I am sure you will make the most of it. And so, I will die happy, not sad, not angry, happy. For all I have ever wanted, my child, is for you to be able to seize the days as they come to make the most of life and do with it as your passions lead you. But of course, there is one more thing to be said. That is why I write this letter. Rather than the typical way of messaging digitally, I write this by hand to be delivered to you on arrival, sealed. This, my child, is because this is the most important thing in my life. This is my final lesson to teach you. There is a quote upon my bed and upon the side of your bed that reads, For I am conscious of my knowledge and I know of my conscience. Yes, I know that quote. You have asked me where it came from for as long as you have been able to read it and I have always avoided that. But now is the time to tell you, before I pass, it must be said here, upon this page. Many, many years ago, I was part of the Scipian Guard. The wars were numerous, as you know. But what you will not have read in the textbooks is of me. Your mother was involved in the Never Ever War. Yes, I was. The textbooks do not discuss the topic much for you or any other of the children. You, of course, never talk to them, but if you did, they would know only as much as you do. The Never Ever War was a long conflict that we do not discuss. Even the adults that are older than me do not because it never ever should have happened and it never ever will happen again. But on this one occasion, my child, I shall tell you something of it in this letter which you must burn after reading. I was a captain of a brigade at the fall of Krieger when all the clocks in the world stopped working and the explosions sent glass and bricks from buildings five miles up and across the city of Amentus. It was a tough fight that lasted three weeks. We fought against them well. And when it was over, despite being rather unknown and honestly not worth noticing, I was given a special assignment. My intelligence, my resourcefulness and my skill at commanding. Somebody somewhere had heard of me somehow. Apparently, I had garnered a reputation for driving back the enemy forces at Amentis with only a handful of casualties. I know this seems like a rather odd topic for my last letter, but please be patient, my child. The assignment required me to go behind enemy lines. My parents had taught me the enemy's language early in life to help me obtain a job, just as I had seen it taught to you in these times where we were at peace with them. So, I was sent behind enemy lines. My assignment was to be one of the last assignments in the Never Ever War. Though, of course, I didn't know that at the time. Our top reconnaissance agents had reported back to Central House in what was at the time our nation's capital, Neskpa. 
that the enemy had been conducting top secret research into more effective ways of dismantling our people. A handful of people were to be sent off to infiltrate research stations covering separate projects. Project Ronos, Project Aptimos, Project Chaos and my assignment, Project Apollos. No knowledge was ever given to me of the other assignments or the people that took them on, but I know that their work was just as crucial as mine in the peace of our world. I was able to put my degree in psychology from the years before the Never Ever War started to good use in my cover story. Project Apollos was being undertaken in a most deserted land not far from the borders of the enemy, where you would now find the crystal bridges of Harmony, I think. It was Quintember of the last year of the Never Ever War when I slipped behind the enemy borders. One of their leading scientists was appalled by the nature of the project and had offered their life within the country to me. You too, my child, would likely have wished to flee if you knew what the country had been like back then. In return, the scientist was taken out of the border as I entered by some of our best operatives. Later, I would discover that she had been killed in an attack by her own people on one of our borders. They said that all the walls and bodies had been warped and twisted and splintered into random assortments of bricks and body parts by some new kind of bomb. But that is not important. I took my place in their life as a scientist, and though it was somewhat daunting, I was soon able to work my way from the typical psychological propaganda and experimentation department right into the hands of Dr X. You will not have heard of Dr X. No one had. Not even the people who had known her for years had any clue of her past. But she was in charge of Project Apollos, and what a project it was. The project was her own idea, forged from years and years of research and unbelievable scientific breakthroughs. A small device capable of taking one's own beliefs and transmitting it out into the world. Somehow, she had found a key to taking belief and turning it into something tangible, a form of atomic wave. It was not quite perfect, but it was rapidly increasing in effectiveness. By the time I had been moved into her staff, it was nearly complete. The range of Project Apollos was proving to be troublesome. The other projects had been effectively sabotaged and so it came down to me to put an end to this final weapon. It was a small thing, not much bigger than the generation before mine referred to as an iPhone. It was almost terrifying at the time to think that such a device could be so small. Though, it was incredibly complex within. To be so small and yet so capable at broadcasting beliefs into others was beyond considering. One day, my child, just as Dr X was beginning to come close to getting the range increased to a point where it could reach our borders, I got her alone. I had become her favourite over time and so she would often privately boast to me. It was utterly horrible to hear her talk of what she would do with it when it was completed. To think that she could have been so capable of so much good for the world. And yet, she had decided instead to forge forward with her plans to hypnotise the world as she saw fit. My orders were simple, to kill Dr X and destroy the lab. All of the theory behind Project Apollos had to be obliterated with her, so I killed her. That was simple enough. It was only fitting to use the project to show her that she deserved to die for the evil that she had planned. She set the lab ablaze and slit her wrists. And within the chaos of that, coupled with a well-planned strike of our government on their borders, I was able to escape the lab, out of their land and back home. They no doubt believed that I had perished in the blaze. For I am conscious of my knowledge and I know of my conscience. You have always asked me what that meant and now I shall tell you. It is the motto of Project Apollos, a last glimmer of it that has survived in my mind. Dr X used it often, and for all her horrible actions and plans, it is the one thing that I felt had a touch of goodness to it, a touch of hope. After returning home, I took it upon myself as a motto, reshaped it into my own meaning, and those are the words that I have lived by since. And my last lesson, my child, is this. Remember your conscience. Remember the good in yourself. 
for that is required above all knowledge. No matter what you learn, you must always act in the knowledge that you are doing good, above all else. These are my dying words, my child, and I'm so sorry to have kept all this from you, but it had to be this way. Some things are best left unsaid until on one's deathbed. I am proud of you, all 16 years of your life thus far. I hope to have passed some of my goodness on to you and wish you all my love in our peaceful times ahead. My dying words, my child, and I apologise for the hasty writing just now, but time grows short. My dying words, my child, below your bed lies the motto, as it has below mine. Carry it onwards, in hope, in love and in goodness. You will find a key attached to the underside of your bed and you will find a locked box behind the inscription of the motto on my bed. Within it is the Project Apollo's device, for it had to be saved from the evils of Dr X and used for good. The peace of our times is held by it, but with my death, it will need new beliefs to guide it. Your education is finished, my child. All my lessons are done. Use the device well. Take care of the world. Ensure that they never have any thoughts that are not your own. Never have any thoughts that could be bad. Ensure they do not fight. Ensure that they do not sin. The world is yours, my child. Love, your dear mother, Myrta, Empress of the world. <laughs>